All right, sorry about the interruption. That was somebody from the... I am calling you from the U.S. Pharmacy. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, so... All right, where was I at? What are we doing? All right, the game game level. Okay, so what was this again? Game level dot H. And of course, we're trying to do glue and all this in here. Oh wait, don't know why. I'm doing this anyways. Game object dot H. Okay, everything else good now. Everything looks good. Saving this, right? Okay. Isn't there a command for save all? Save all, control, shift, s. Right, I do that before I compile. Uh, we're still using soil. I'll probably take that out okay. in the next thing. But also, closer for the find source code the game class. Well, the game is within the game. We would like to support multiple levels in the breakout game, so we'll have to extend the game class a little by adding a vector that holds variables of type game level. We'll also store the currently active level while we're at it. The example listed above would, after being processed by game level, look like this. Would it actually do this? <coughs> so this is a text file right here. So what are we doing? We're in actually not in there. Um, we're in breakout one, so that's here. Level data, that's what we're calling it. Okay, level data. There we go. So where does it load it? Um, load, load, file. So game breakout. I'm confused as to why that would work. Because I didn't do anything to main. Maybe we're not done yet. <clears throat> How much more is this? How much more? We'd like to support multiple levels in the breakout game, so we'll have to extend the game class a little by adding a vector that holds variables of type game level. We'll also store the currently active level while we're at it. Okay, class game. <coughs> Excuse me. This tutorial version of breakout game features a total of four levels. Cool. Standard, few small gaps, space invader, bounce score. How come those are clickable? What is that? Oh. Breakout levels one. <laughs> okay, we already got those. Standard, few small gaps, space invader, bounce galore. Okay. Each of the textures and levels are then initialized within the game class's init function. Game init resource manager function background. Oh, levels one. Oh, here. Okay. Now that'll. So is that actually in there? Game, game level, init. No, it's not in there. It just does the tile data thing. So it does that. Game init. Am I looking at that right? No. Uh, game object? No. <laughs> hey, here you go. Game. What do you know? Game init right here. So you're going to put it in here. Sprite image. Oh, sprite projection. Oh, right. That makes sense. So we're going to use a resource manager to load these things in. Oh, perfect, resource manager, this is right. Okay, I, I'm kind of following it, 
putting two and two together, good grief. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay, so we want to save those as background, awesome face, block, solid block. We don't want background and awesome face, do we? No, we don't need those. So let's save these as one level. Where can that be? Level data, let's just go into here. Uh, file, save as. We're in breakout one, right? So one dot LVL, save. Oh my God, did it just do what I think it just did? Gotta love Notepad. I love, I love friggin' Notepad. All right, so it's actually called one level. Okay. Go to this one, which is the second level. Two level. Paste. Now file. Save as. All files. Thank you very much. Two. Okay, so we're saving it as a. There you go. Three. Copy paste. Ba -ba -bum. File save as all files. I have to go get my laundry in a second. Three dot level. Here's four. The heck. File save as all files. Save. Okay, each of the textures and levels that are initialized in the game's init function. Now let's left to do is actually run to the level, which we accomplish by calling the currently active levels draw function, that in turn calls each game object's draw function using the given sprite renderer. Aside from the level, we'll also render the scene with a nice background image courtesy of Tenha. Hmm. Background image? Okay, within the game render, if this state game actor draw background, draw sprite resource manager, get texture background, and so it draw level. Okay, the result is in a nicely rendered level that really starts to make the game feel more alive. While we're at it, we might as well just, we might just as well introduce a paddle at the bottom of the scene that is controlled by the player. The paddle only allows for, well, wait a minute, I want to do the other first. Why are we going through? Mom, they're going too fast. <laughs> okay, but that's the end. All right, we're going to just go through this to the end here. <clears throat> the paddle only allows for horizontal movement. Whenever it touches any of the screen's edges, movement should halt. The player paddle, we're going to use the following texture. Okay. Paddle.png. Save as. Will that save? Oh, good lord. And we're lost. That's not working for me. Um, 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 um. Oh, right. Save picture as. Ah, this is killing me. Crazy. Panel.png. Okay. So we also need to go back and get the solid. And oh, here's the background image. So I'm going to load, there it is, save picture, background image. We need to go back and get the solid and the block texture is solid block. How did I miss that? What do you know? Block texture, solid block. Oh boy, we've got to get all these graphics in there. Okay, all right. So we have the graphics. Okay. Player paddle. The paddle object will have a position size and a sprite texture, so it makes sense to define the paddle as a game object, of course. The initial size of the player paddle. Vector two player size. Const. Const. Player velocity. Okay, player. In it. Load texture paddles. True paddle. What is that? Load texture paddle. Interesting. Must be a name that it gives. I, I remember vaguely doing something with the resource manager. 
Player position, vector two, size, all that fun stuff. Guess. But looks like it puts it right in the middle to start. And the height is always going to be the same. New player object, player position, we're supposed to be in a good. Get texture panel. Okay, that's interesting. That must be how it references the. Uh, here we define several kinds of values that define the panel's size and speed. Within the game's init functions, we calculate the starting position of the paddle within the scene. We make sure the player paddle's center is aligned to the horizontal center of the scene. <clears throat> With the player paddle initialized, we also need to add a statement to the game's render function. Player draw renderer. If you'd start the game now, you would not only see the level, but also a fancy player paddle aligned to the bottom edge of the screen. As of now, it doesn't really do anything besides just statically sit there. So we're also going to delve into the game's process input function to horizontally move the paddle whenever the user press the A or D key. If this state equals game active, velocity equals player velocity times DT, move player board. If this key is key A, player position x is greater than or equal to zero, player position minus equals velocity. If key is D, if player position x is less than or equal to this width minus player size x, player position velocity plus velocity. Okay. Here we move the player paddle, even in the left or right direction, based on which key the user pressed. Note how we multiply the velocity with the delta time variable. Okay. If the paddle's x value would be less than zero, it would have moved outside the left edge. So we only move the paddle to the left of the paddle's x value is higher than the left edge's position, 0.0. .0. We do the same for when the paddle breaches the right edge, but we have to compare the right edge of position with the right edge of the paddle. Subtract the paddle's width from the right edge's x position. Right, because you're always drawing from the one side. Now running the game because the player paddle can move across the bottom edge. You can find the updated code of the game class below. Okay. And here we go. The game class, which is game.h and game.cpp, right? This has got the init. Okay, great. So where are we at? This is game cpp, which is right here. I'm just going to copy that in. I'm just going to overwrite everything there. Save it. Look at the errors. Game level might, might go away. <laughs> game.h. I don't think there's much of a change other than the initial size of the player paddle. Game. H. Game level. Oh, right here. I have to correct this every time. I just just stop copying and pasting. <laughs> Go back up to the top and look at this game object. Okay. Let's compile it. See what it does. If it works, I'll be amazed. Yeah. <laughs> you share error shader link time error type program. Vertex shaders failed to link. Fragment shader failed to link. Oh, I forgot about those guys. The shaders have everything. We took care of that before, though. That's here and here. So what's up with the shaders, man? Problem with the shaders. So do we need do we need to go back and get the shaders again? Oh I'm dizzy. Dizzy. Getting dizzy. Whoa. Do um sprite render. Okay. Transformations. Here's the sh here's the shader fragment shader vertex shader right there so fragment yeah looks right vertex shader oh. Is it? I bet you what it is is the. Um, uh, what it is is probably what main. No, it's really not in main because I would have had that. 
working before. It's probably in the game when it's looking for the shader. Yeah, right here. Load shader. Well, we're going to load vertex.text. And then fragment, we're just going to load fragment.text. So don't go getting all fancy. <laughs> I think that'll fix it. Okay, did it give errors? No errors, but it didn't do anything. So, oh, that's right, because well, we don't need awesome face and then textures. None of them are in that directory. I put them all just in the root directory, so. And none of the levels are, are, in, are in this levels directory, although that would be an organized way to do things. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> I probably should. Okay, shall we try again? Whoa, that works. That's cool. What, what were the keys? A and D, nice. You can't really see the paddle, but that's okay. Huh. Well, what do you know? That's really beautiful. <laughs> okay, well, I hope this helps somebody. This is part two because I got interrupted by a stupid phone call. Anyways, but uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. Um, I also just updated the channel with an up-and-coming features, and I'm working on that right now. I just got a new book for Windows 10 apps, which will be fun to look at. <clears throat> but in the meantime, this is kind of cool. We're building this, um, building this uh, game object, game level, game manager, resource manager, shader, sprite renderer, texture. I mean, all these classes going together. It's a little, for me, I got to tell you, it's a little overwhelming, but I'm getting used to the classes thing. Um, I'm going to have to look at this a little bit more carefully. Um, it'll be fun to play around with and of course we're going to continue the tutorial. Uh, the next part of it is down here. It's going to be 53 which is... and that was cool. You know adding that stuff in is pretty easy. Um, so 2D game putting the ball in there and then we'll probably get into collision detection which would be very exciting so so we're on page 470 so I'm gonna go and change that update that all right and thank you very much for watching <laughs>